I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future and to urge my colleagues in the House and Senate to act. We can ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines in this country once again. I got that done when I was a senator. It passed. It was law for the longest time. And it brought down these mass killings. We should do it again. Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakhar Kodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, and the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, uh, the uh, hopeful elect, the men that are doing this work in sincerity and truth, and the one third of you men, women, and children uh, that are believing in His word. And helping, believing, and uh, listening to all of the best of your ability to you all. I say shalom and greetings and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Um, so, as you see, I just had a clip up of Joe Biden, right? And um, I can see more and more through uh, the scriptures and more and more how in Babylon they're starting to, they're pushing their agenda of, um, you know, gun control and weapons control. And, you know, as a disclaimer, OK, we uh, here at Great Millstone, you know, we don't we, we push spirituality, um, you know, not carnality. So, you know, going out and taking taking up swords and taking up guns uh, to fight against Esau isn't something that's going to prevail anyway, you know, and I'm going to get into that a little bit. But, um, you know, this is something as far as the prophecies go. We understand that Esau is uh, the devil, first and foremost. He's a manipulator. All right. He tries to he tries to he'll take away the same thing he's trying to use. Right. Or he'll enforce something on you that he does. Just like how, as a small example, how all the so-called black, Hispanic and Native Americans that were locked up for marijuana. But now they have marijuana farms and businesses legally, you know. Um, that's what Esau Edom does, right? Um, but let me get this verse real quick. This is Revelation 6 and verse 4. It says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Right? So this is the red horse is referring to the nation of Edom, which are red people, you know, that are uh, corrupted and uh, filthy with blood, you know, they're, uh, that's a part of their history, which is dumb in the Hebrew. They, they're all about that blood, man. They're all about that sword. Sword is Karab, uh, in the Hebrew, you know, and that's, that's the, the, they should take peace from the earth, you know? And so when we talk about, uh, Esau Edom and his gun control, Esau wants to have all the gun control so he can tell you what to do and what not to do with it. He doesn't tell you uh, he's going to have gun control because he cares about the school shootings and his um, false flags that he sets up. You know, he's doing it for gun control. It's just like, uh, you know, I might mention this once or twice, but, uh, you know, I had recently finished the Walking Dead series. And what is the uh, the people with the more guns try to do? They come up and they point a gun at somebody and then they tell the group, drop or give us all your weapons, you know. You, when you're the controlling party, you want to make sure your enemies are as, as least defended as possible. All right. So that you now have the advantage. And that's what Esau Edom does. And so I'm going to get a scripture real quick. That's in uh second Maccabees, uh, the 15th chapter, even though this was an actual sword, you know, I want to do a couple of things. One, I want to compare how, you know, we have, uh, we have the word of the most high as our sword, right? We don't need, uh, weapons, uh, per se, you know, there are brothers who, who have weapons and, you know, that's your own business. But at the end of the day, to truly put all your faith and reliance in that, that that's folly, man. Okay. But well, let me get this. This is second Maccabees 15 and verse 16. And this is Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, uh, talking to Judas, right? But this is, he was given, like I said, he was giving him a sword of gold, but still this point, this is a precept right here. It says, take this holy sword a gift from the Most High, 
with the which thou shalt wound the adversaries. And see, that's that's how we know ultimately it's the scriptures that's going to wound our enemy. So that's why when Esau come in as a flood, like Isaiah 59 and 19 says, he's going to uh, he he can't take away this the sword that we have. Right. He'll be able to take away the carnal sword that these people own. Right. But he can't take away the sword that we have because we have the holy sword. We have a gift from the most high, something that's going to wound our enemies, our, our enemies. And they, actually, the scriptures um, say that as well. Let me get, uh, you know, I got to get the Hebrews. I would be remiss not to get that one. Just came to mind. This is Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the divi dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see that? So this word is quicker and sharper than any two-edged sword, you know, piercing to the soul and the spirit, you know? So um, uh, I do want to say, you know, the modern-day sword obviously is the gun, you know, that these people are using. But it, it's, it, it all comes down to it that uh, the Lord's word is what's going to triumph. So Esau can come in, he can take as many weapons as he want, because ultimately he he that's that's who he is, man. You know, let me let me get that in Psalms, actually. You know, it's, uh, when you read the scriptures, it said that Esau would rule uh, by the sword, you know. So I don't know why people are shocked if Esau wants to the head government. All right. The wicked of the earth, uh, you know, not saying that government is the, uh, just them, but the so-called white nation. Why they want to rule with these guns. And you you must be out of your mind. You think those uh, gung-ho Edomites, all these Edomites, they're going to go down fighting, uh, given, uh, hold, trying to hold on to their weapons. But this is Psalm 17 and 13. It says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Right? And so we know, according to Job 9 and 24, the... Um, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, right? Which right now, the people that are ruling the earth are the Edomites, starting with Amalek, the so-called Jewish people, right? Who are not the real Jews, according to the Bible. But um, I also have this point here before I continue on. Uh, if you see this photo in the background, and she's a, a representative in the House of Representatives. Her name is Lauren, Lauren Boebert. It says, the left's gun control agenda will affect America's women more than anyone else. I'm a five foot tall, 100 pound woman. It says the way, the only way that I'm safe is to walk around any dangerous liberal city is with an equalizer. Gun control is anti-woman. You see that? And so this is why we also tell, um, you know, uh, of course, she's an Edomite, but we tell that you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. We tell you the importance of um, you women the importance of finding a man of the Lord, right? And not being wicked and, and entangled with this world because this uh, this quote alone lets you know that that equality system isn't true. She said it's the equalizer, right? Because she feels like she doesn't have a stance in American society going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a man. That's really what she's saying, but she won't say that. She says it's the equalizer, but it's not. All right. The word is the equalizer. The faith and the belief is the equalizer. And the man of the Lord is the best thing to cleave on to, you know, but these Edomites, they will trick the world into believing that the gun is the way. Um, this is Isaiah 13 and 12. It says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. You see that? So the Lord said he's going to make a man, meaning the Israelite men. All right. The, the elect, he says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. All right. And, you know, we always talk about how the economy collapses. How precious is gold in a time when there is no uh, paper currency? You know, it's uh, it's a big deal. You know, let me get one more. Actually, Isaiah 32 and verse two, it says, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers in the water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in the weary land. You see that? So this is why going on in that chapter talks about uh, the women rising up, the women that are at ease, you know, careless daughters, careless women. Okay. Because it's about to get really bad in these streets, man. All right. And so 
uh, not to get on that topic too much, but it's just a reminder that, you know, troubling times are coming, man. Okay. Matter of fact, let me get this one first. Troubling times are coming and, um, and you need the protection of the Lord, uh, a man of the Lord and, uh, the spirit of the Lord to protect you in those times, man. Cause it's going to be crazy out here, you know? Um, see, this is, she's just talking about walking every day down the street. We're not, she's not even talking about in c complete, uh, chaos and mayhem, right? But this is second Ezra 15 and 15. It says 14, it says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction drive nigh. One people shall stand up to fight against another and sword uh, with swords in their hands. And this is how, you know, no matter how many weapons that Esau tries to take. People are still going to find a way to find each other. People are going to still have... Um, that's another reference I was going to make to the Walking Dead. You notice they always find these random uh, plots of weapons that's been stashed up by other people, you know, and putting in certain positions, hiding holes, you know. So people are still going to have a lot of actual guns in that time. But people are going to use machetes, knives, uh, makeshift weapons, all types of things to fight each other, man. It says, uh, but a lot of guns is going to definitely be that. It says, for there shall be sedition among men and in invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And see, this is Esau implementing the, the revoking of your guns. Then you're going to revoke your travel abilities. You're going to have to stay stationed in whatever city, state, county that you're in. It says, for because of their pride... The city shall be troubled. And see, even though this isn't directly talking about this, but what's one of Esau's main source of pride? His his gun, man, his weapons. Okay, his arsenal. They they like whole different men when they got their gun on them. And that goes for the two thirds of our people too. It's like they got they chest puffed up if they got a gun on them, man. You know, but guns have problems, man. Guns guns go wrong, guns get jammed, guns backfire, you know, guns get dropped. Guns don't get cleaned, you know, uh, bullets are made improperly. And we all, you always have to trump all of that by the spirit of the Lord. The Lord can make whatever happened to that gun that he wants. He can make it just be a none effect to a man of the Lord, right? It says, uh, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Right? So he's, hey, Esau, he said he's coming down with great wrath, man. Coming in with a great flood, man. And these are neighbors going to be fighting each other. How much more uh, the government trying to take something that's supposed to be your, your right on one of your uh, Bill of Rights and Amendments, right? It says, uh, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You see that? So these are woes that are coming to the earth, man. These are the beginning of woes, man. And so it's, it's going to get nasty out here. And people don't even understand that. People aren't taking heed to the thing that the, the things that the Lord is trying to convey to you people that we're coming closer and closer to a, a, that time of trouble, man. Actually, let me go ahead and get 2 Ezra 16 and uh, 70. It says, For they shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. See that? So Esau's using, and that's another thing. He, you know, Esau coming to get us like we up in here, like strapped up like an Edomite, you know, even though brothers do got one or two guns or three guns, brothers ain't got no damn arsenal like, like Esau Edom that been carrying, getting guns since he was 12 years old. Hey, they even showed you on a, <laughs> what movie was that? Uh, Brightburn, right? When, uh, uh, the son, you know, even though spiritually he's a Jake, but Brandon Breyer is when he turned 12, where they put a shotgun, they put a, a rifle in front of him, man. Even though the dad said no, but hey, and then the dad took him hunting with him. You know, so this lets you know the, the mentality from a young age that these children grow up in. You know, Jake, Jake might, you might get Jake's that they pops might have had a gun or they grew up in the hood. So, you know, selling drugs or a harsh neighborhood might have had a gun, but it wasn't a part of our everyday lifestyle, man. Okay? But Joe Biden and his part of this agenda, they make fake fl false flag events happen, like shootings and things like that, just so they can have more of a reason to prevent gun control. And you see they're trying to take the larger 
ammunition weapons away. So they are basically saying you can keep your little nine millimeter. We're trying to get the heavy artillery. You know, that's what they're coming for. The uh, assault rifles, you know, it says, um, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their, oh, excuse me. They, this is verse 71, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. See that? That fear the Lord. They're going to be uh, like madmen, man. All right? And you just think of a madman. He's just going all out. He's like, and then you, like a crazy eyed guy, his eyes bugged out, he got blood off over his face. Like, they're going to be like madmen, bro. You know? It says, um, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. And these are things that's going to happen to the men of the Lord. You know, this is why we need the Lord on our side. It says, then they shall be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Right. So the Lord, they're going to know the Lord's chosen because they're going to receive spiritual power, man. And that's really what, what we're looking for, man. You know, at the end of the day, for the brothers who out there, uh, you know, brothers got their straps and I hope they... They still do get, because the Lord going to reveal it to where they he going to show them that they don't need that, that they need the Lord anyway. But, hey, man, you know, we praying brothers get spiritual powers, man. You know, so so Esau can't even do nothing. All right. It says, they shall be tried as gold in the fire. It says, hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is your God. So that's a cut for everybody thinking that Jacob's trouble isn't coming. All right. It says, let me read that verse again. It says, behold, all ye, my beloved, said the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Right. So the Lord said he's going to deliver uh, his elect from those troubling times that are about to, uh, about to come down. man. They're trying to do us. Uh, the Lord said, um, if they have if they have done it to you, if they have done it to me, they shall surely do it to you because the servant is not greater than his master. Right. This is uh, Matthew 26 and 52 when they were coming to uh, uh, crucify our Lord. This is as then said Yahweh shy unto him, put up again thy sword into his place for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Right. And so that was, um, you know, speaking, uh, speaking to Peter. You know, for wanting to cut, cut for cutting the ear, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, we know we got the sword of the Lord, man. That's ultimately what it comes down to, and that wasn't the. It was it was uh, it was it was the Lord's time at that time to go right. Um. There was another verse that I wanted, I wanted Mark, because it says it a little differently than it says it in this chapter. Uh, Mark, uh, chapter fourteen. In verse 48, it says, um, And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? You know, and so that's how they came against our Lord. He like, you know, as a thief, like they came out like he had committed a crime. The scriptures talk about how they persecuted our Lord without cause. You know, so they came out like he like he committed a severe crime, man. You know, so that's how they're going. We, you know, we're going to at the end of the day, we're innocent in the eyes of the Hobart Shemel Shah and in the eyes of these people courts because, you know, we're doing, you know, there are brothers who may have had problems with things prior to coming into the true things that still may be looming over their heads and stuff. But we're, when you follow the laws and statutes of uh Hobart Shemel Shah, you do things according to that. So, you know, we're not out murdering anybody. We're not out stealing from people, you know, because we we despise those things, you know. And so ultimately the Lord is uh, going to reveal that they are persecuting us falsely, you know. But that, that's all a part of the testimony. That's all a part of the will of the Lord, you know. But two-thirds of our people are going to get judged, and that goes for men, women, and children, all right. Two-thirds of our people are going to get judged uh, for their wickedness. That's why... Amos 9 and 10 says, uh, the, the sinners of my people shall fall by the sword. So don't be surprised when Esau come gunning them down. You know, that's a part of prophecy. So for you two, hey, you two thirds, y'all get ready for judgment, man. You Edomites, they come to try to take your guns, but y'all gonna, y'all gonna still tuck some away, you know, but those might be reserved for the men of the Lord too. You never know what the Lord's plan is, man. You know, 
And you, for you women out there, hey, you women that listen, consider yourself blessed. And you pray to pray the Lord have mercy on you, man. You know, because like this lady, what what is she going to do in Jacob's trouble, man? If they take her little nine millimeter, they take her little, uh, her little tutu that's in her purse, you know, she's five feet and a hundred pounds, man. That lady, she, she doesn't have a chance. That's why she says the equalizer. She has no chance, man. All right. And so, hey, Babylon's about to be destroyed, man. It's almost a wrap for this place. And we ask the Lord for his protection and for his mercy and the troubling times that are about to befall this country. All right. Um, I got to get this and I'll end it up. This is Ephesians chapter six and verse 17. It says, and take F, start at 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the most high. You see that? So that's our sword is this word, man. So keep believing and keep fighting, y'all. Um, it's almost getting to that time. All right. So with that, I'm going to give all the praise, honor and glory to Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai Ba'asham, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.